Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a crazy day, and it's been a busy day. We're all getting ready for Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, and focused on our personal life and getting better and being the best people we could be. I wanted to share a story with you that happened to me yesterday, and I have a message for each and every one of you. So I was sitting here in the office yesterday between calls and meetings, planning and preparing for the holiest day of the year, meeting people, reaching out, doing what has to be done. And I get a phone call from a colleague, Chabad Rabbi in Boston, and he says, I got a call from Chelsea home that there's a patient that needs to be seen in hospice in Jamaica Plains. Now, as the Chabad rabbi in Cheston Hill, I service in Jamaica Plain. And I said, fine, let them call me. And I get a call from this lady, and she says, listen, there's this elder lady, she's 90 plus years old, to be exact, she was 94. She's in this place, I'm even forgetting the name of uh, the Rogerson House or something like that. And she really wanted a rabbi to visit her, the rabbi from her congregation can come, would you go? And it was really busy, it was almost four o'clock, I was supposed to pick up my kids from school. I said, you know, maybe tomorrow. And she said, well, I don't know what's gonna be till tomorrow, is there no chance you could go today? And I thought to myself for a second, and I said, one second. It's right between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Why am I saying no? So I called Gruny, I said, could you do me a favor, could you pick up the kids? I'm going to this place to visit the person. So I come to this home and this hospice home and I check in and they put me on a whole gown and gloves and the works obviously to be safe and I come into the room and there's a woman that's unconscious and sick and the, <coughs> the daughter who's there with her says, could I, I start praying and says, could I zoom in my siblings? And she zooms in her three siblings and we do the prayers, I say the vidui, the last rites, the, confe the, the, the confession and the shema and all the prayers that we're supposed to say. Her two sisters and her brother are listening in and um, we finish off. It was a very quiet, emotional, personal, 20 minute moving time. And then she, I said, oh, where do you be belong? She tells me, oh, I belong to this and the synagogue. He said, wow, they have so many rabbis, couldn't they? come and, <laughs> and visit, and she says, well, they only wanted to do a virtual call, but I figured my mother deserves someone in person, and I'm so grateful that you came, and I see they're sitting on the wall, a picture of the parents, of the grandparents, of this woman, with a big, long beard, etc. two generations back, they were in Russia, they were observing Jews, I say, thank you, here's my phone number, if you need anything else, let me know. And then at 11 o'clock at night, I get a call, a text, excuse me, letting me know that this lovely woman passed away and how appreciative they were that I came to say the vidui, to say the confession and the last prayers with her. And it really touched me and moved me and I felt, I felt very good because it was a chesed shalemes, it was a true kindness. I didn't need or ask for anything. I didn't give them my address or the, I don't even know if they know my name and I just wanted to do that mitzvah. But then it made me think, Right now, it's between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Each and every one of us is looking into our actions, the things that we could get better from for, it's called Aseris Yemei Teshuvah, the 10 days of returning to God. And I know this probably, each and every one of us has someone that we have to call, maybe to apologize, or that we haven't spoken to in six months, in a year, in five years, in 10 years that we want to call. And as we're in these times of introspection, we think, you know, let me make the call, and then we stop ourselves. We don't have the courage. We're scared that that person might not pick up the call or might hang up on us or might ignore us or we're worried about what we have to answer for, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to tell you to make that call, to visit that person, to have the courage it takes to maybe say I'm sorry to have to speak about things that you did that you might regret, to maybe have the courage to have someone ignore you. Because sometimes that opportunity will never come again. If I didn't go yesterday, if I said, you know what, I'll go tomorrow, today I would have been sitting here thinking, what if, 
what if I had the courage to just get into my car, move things around, and drive over to a woman that her daughter wanted the last prayer said for? We each have things that hold us back from doing what's right. But as we say in Pirkei Avot, in Ethics of Our Fathers, one of the most powerful messages, don't say when I have the time, because maybe, just maybe, you'll never have the time. There's no better moment than the 10 days of Teshuvah, the 10 days of repentance. People understand each other then. People are more forgiving. People are more caring. Pick up that phone to the person you didn't call for 10 years, the best friend, the sibling, the parent, the child. It might be hard. You might be rejected. But if you don't try, you'll never know. And if you don't try, there'll be so many what ifs when the opportunity will be too, lo too late. May God give us the courage and the strength to ask for forgiveness, to make amends. And may God give those who we make amends for and those we ask forgiveness for from the courage to say thank you and I forgive you and let's start a new page. And may God start a new page and a new year with all of us and bless us with a year of health of prosperity, of goodness, of security, of happiness, of love. Have a great day. Go get it.